journal article here, role of mitochondrial oxidative stress and antioxidants uh, when it comes to chronic fatigue. And so one kind of thing here, it just talks about the known role of oxidative stress and how it can relate to essentially fatigue, as well as potential th uh, specific therapeutic treatments for the mitochondria. So that's really powerful. And you know, some of the big things they're going to talk about are the vitamin C, talk about B vitamins, talk about glutathione, and then also some of the more natural anti-inflammatory things. But you know, each study is going to find out, focus on a couple of their, their major things. But people in the literature are looking at these things. It is real, and um, we're seeing it in our patients, and we're trying to apply some of these things to get people's health back. Yeah. So the way you look at this is what can you do to protect against oxidative stress? We covered that glutathione. What can we do to help uh, support the Krebs cycle? We talked about the B vitamins. You've also got just things that are going to help the mitochondria in general, like CoQ10. And then also you can do things like PQQ and there's other nutrients that actually will create what's called mitochondrial biogenesis, where you can literally make new mitochondria. And so I don't think it's in that paper. It does mention CoQ10 there. But well, right PQQ here in the mitochondria, there are enzymes and coenzymes such as vitamin E, CoQ10 to remove ROS, that's reactive oxygen species to prevent DNA damage. So these are really powerful things that we can add in. For example, with low CoQ10, they'll see increase in damage. So CoQ10, PQQ, pyroquinoquinolone, right? Uh, vitamin E, and then, you know, we try to give CoQ10 with vitamin E together for that same reason to prevent a lot of the oxidative stress while fueling the mitochondria. Any other comments on that? Yeah, look at the next part there too, talking about exercise. People that come in with chronic fatigue and how they're having an increased oxidative stress after exercise. And that's a, a problem that we're seeing a lot too, is people that now are having uh, post-exertional fatigue, people that are crashing, even athletes that were really high performing people that now their performance is just in the tank. And a lot of that is just this ongoing oxidative stress, mitochondrial damage. That's not, that, that's not been supported and you can't just exercise your, your way out of this. And I get kind of annoyed when I see like those motivational videos of people that are real sweaty, like you just need to suck it up. You know, pain is weakness, leaving the body. It's like, no, you're wrong. You got to fix the mitochondrial damage. I, I hate those like rah, rah videos because it's ignoring all the nutrients. That video really needs to be talking about, Hey, get your glutathione up, get your ribose up, get your CoQ10 up. Come on people. Like that's what yep. it needs to say. Yeah, and this is a similar marker that we use on the uh, organic acid test. The one that we use is 8-hydroxy-2-deoxyguanosine. This is very, very similar to that. But this is a marker for oxidative stress. So we'll actually use this same marker on a, um, on a mitochondrial test on the organic acid. So we'll look at some of these things to get a window of how stressed these pathways are. So that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Ribose is amazing. Carnitine is amazing. Acetyl L-carnitine is amazing. Also, you know, let's hit the, let's go up a little bit. I like that picture. There was a, like a neurotransmitter picture there that you had. Maybe we should talk about that a little bit because it's not directly going to be a mitochondrial support. Yeah, right there. But I think that's cool to point out too, which is that if we are coming in with nutrients like phenylalanine or tyrosine, eventually some of that may convert over to your neurotransmitters, but then also your adrenal hormones like epinephrine. And I think a lot of people, and I know you see this too, a lot of people are showing up with just low brain chemistry across the board. And so I'm thinking out loud with you that like the real magic remedy is the mitochondrial support plus throwing in some of these neurotransmitter supports as well. Well, and that's why we talked about B vitamins and I kind of went through the gamut. Look how important B6 is in regarding, um, in regarding the synthesis of, you know, tryptophan to serotonin, really important. So you can see how B6 deficiency is really important in this process um, to convert this inflammatory product here, quinolinate, quinolinic acid, uh, back to tryptophan. It needs B6 or to avoid that whole thing. It needs B6. So that's really important. So B6 is really important for synthesis of amino acid tryptophan to serotonin. So very important.